tips, tricks, what you know, all that, like when to post, where to post. I mean, anything, just like um, what you have, what you've experienced, especially in like the med tech field mm -hmm. side of marketing, because it's you know, different than if you were marketing a bag or something. A couple things. Mm -hmm. um, in in med tech broadly, what works? Okay, what? let's do this. This is easier. What doesn't work is me telling surgeons what they should buy. What works is peer-to-peer -peer marketing. So respiratory therapists want to hear from respiratory therapists. Pulmonologists want to hear from pulmonologists. Sleep medicine wants to hear from sleep medicine. Um, the folks who are involved, they have so many different titles, but kind of like supply chain ask folks mm -hmm. at IDNs, like large hospital systems, want to hear from other supply chain folks at other IDNs and health systems. And the reason for that is, is credibility, it's trust and credibility, right? Yeah. So to, I think that's the first kind of starting point is this turning things up. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's helpful, but what's really going to have value uh, is trying to put together some of that peer to peer stuff. So. Even if it, so for some examples could be, uh, hey, we're attending this meeting. Uh, hey, we're attending this meeting, in case you missed it. Here was this really interesting abstract. Here's this kind of key factoid that maybe not everyone's aware of or something different, not the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. So that's a way of doing kind of peer to peer without having to get some case study of some person with their, you know, name on it. Following some of the societal stuff, what's okay. happening with the key societies, mm -hmm. uh, what's happening with the key medical societies, what's happening, like figure out what they're, you know, ask what are the questions you all get the most, what kind of facilities, and then find where those people are having those conversations. And you can look to kind of share, elevate some of that information into, uh, if, if you're targeting, I don't know where supply chain people hang out, but if you're targeting physicians and like providers, they tend to hang out on LinkedIn or Twitter. Mm -hmm. They are not on Facebook. Don't bother. Same for Instagram. No way Pinterest or any of the rest of those Snapchat or... Probably not. Yeah. But there are a ton of medical folks on Twitter uh, and there are a whole pile load on LinkedIn. Okay. You can go and kind of observe and watch and see they, they both have very much like you wouldn't post the same thing on, you wouldn't take something from LinkedIn post on Snapchat, for example, LinkedIn is it's colleagues, it's professionals. It's, mm -hmm. it's much more business ask. It can have some, a little bit of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to be kind of human uh, yes. and social media, generally the deal with uh, B2B, which I'm in, which you're in, uh, is you two or three value posts, like giving value and then one promotional. So if you do like two, we're going to give some value and then we're going to promote ourselves. Uh, that's kind of the right cadence. It's not buy my cool stuff, buy my cool stuff, buy my cool stuff. Got it. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. You don't constantly want to be like just this ad for whatever. Cause I mean, it's like when ads pop up on your things, you're like, I've seen enough of this, like I'm done. Versus right. The humanity side of things, like you said. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what I found works really well, let's see if I can pull this. So what we did that worked out really well was, um, Picking a posting cadence and sticking to it come heck or high water. Mm -hmm. uh, so I picked three days a week because I wanted to be able to do something consistently and stick with it. Yeah. So it's better to do something smaller consistently than to like seven days a week, three times a day. Plus LinkedIn is, that's not the place to do that. Twitter, yes. Um, yeah. So my podcast, I do snippet on Tuesday, which is a video snippet from mm -hmm. the full podcast. Wednesday is a quote. Thursday is another snippet, right? We, I'm still learning and gathering data. 
uh, when we were kind of in between podcast episodes, we agreed thematically like, hey, it'd be an anecdote or share. I would introduce someone who was like a mentor of mine okay. and we would do kind of a rest and decompress. So I, and then you can see rinse, repeat anecdote, right? We did this month of April. So uh, then it, the way it worked was Joanna would write, here are some ideas. Like we would mm -hmm. talk about it. She'd sketch some, some ideas and she'd say, hey, can you write a little bit about it? So I would write this. You can see this, like, it's just like a paragraph. Yeah. And then she translated it. Got it. To an actual caption. Mm -hmm. uh, now you can, of course, continue to build this way out and put, you know, what is the content you're posting with it? Where's the image, all the rest of this. Mm -hmm. um, but I found for us, for her, us to agree thematically on what we were going to do for a month mm -hmm. and then sketch out some ideas. And she would say, well, what was in here before? She'd say, like, please give me an example of X, Y, Z, or please yeah. tell me this and then the other thing, or maybe, you know, maybe this could be a book. And I'm like, okay, here's a, here's something from a book, right? Mm -hmm. It's, so it fits with me. I'm right. I'm writing it, but she's putting it in, she's translating it. <laughs> that fair? Emoji yeah. buying my post. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I keep it here, I'm like, let's use video of Brynn, I provide via email, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is long, so she, you know, cleaned it up. But like, yeah. I'm this, I was signing my office, yes, I realize it's, but we need this reminder, you know? Mm -hmm. It was interesting. I got a lot of, so this was kind of the, I told people, Hey, in the month of April, taking a pause on the podcast, we're going to be doing some more, you know, kind of sharing these three themes. Mm -hmm. So people knew like, Hey, we're taking a shift. Yeah. Not like what happened to all the med tech podcast content. So yeah, you can see my writing her caption. But this was an easy way for me to get it out of me and her to use something specific to med tech without having to know it. Yeah, so you, you get the idea. So I found just something really simple like this became, you know, was was a helpful way. Simple, easy, nothing fancy. Yeah. Way to do it. What kind of like content would you post with that? Just like whatever was there and then? Uh, so let's see, recently I attended. Well, here, let's take it out of theory and put it in reality. So we can look at kind of posts and activities and then just posts. So you can see here that snippet one is Tuesday. And what I do is I pull like a two to no more than four minute video. Yep. Snippet of like an easy something to a takeaway, right? Okay. And then if you do this, right, there's lots. This is basically the podcast description and links to, we post it on, we have a podcast distribution platform for all the audio and it goes up on YouTube as an actual video. So I videotape all of it. Yeah. What I would say is not too many tags, not too many links or the algorithm will bury you on LinkedIn. Got it. They, it kind of falls into this. They decide it's in the spam bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a LinkedIn LinkedIn for marketing, I think is one and LinkedIn for creators and there are actual okay. LinkedIn employees who post okay. on how to post on LinkedIn. Okay. I think it's LinkedIn for marketing and LinkedIn for creators. Yeah. I feel like I've seen something like that. Yeah. So here's another podcast, right? Um, mm -hmm. so this is the second snippet. Here's a quote. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit of branding, right? It's my fonts. It's my colors. Yeah. Um, right. Another snippet. Uh, what I find on LinkedIn, which is pretty fascinating, is mm -hmm. so you can see here there are 2,700 impressions. Mm -hmm. An impression on LinkedIn is they've stopped scrolling and watched for 30 seconds or more. Okay. So in my mind, that's views. Mm -hmm. Not full views, but they found the content to be valuable. They watched at least 30 seconds, right? Yeah. So, but what you'll see here is 2,700 people stopped scrolling and watched part of it. And 
37 reacted to it, mm -hmm. like 1%. And then less than 1% kind of commented and shared. Of all the people who drop in my DMs to ask for advice or comment that they really like the podcast or that's super helpful or yeah. to ask a question, literally none of them have ever liked or commented on the LinkedIn page. Interesting. And I think that is largely you know, this hierarchy and there's this person who's been around for so long and uh, I couldn't, like, I don't want to put myself out there or I don't want to show people I don't know things who are my boss, right? My bosses, whatever. Yeah. That's what I attribute it to. But I have my goal, my target audience here, get super clear on who your target audience is because you need like a, a role in a facility and like, all or all the ones like above 50 beds, like Got it. drill, 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 drill to get who they really want you mm -hmm. to be communicate. Like who's really going to move the needle Yeah. And then figure out what are those people then go look those people up. What are they looking at? Yeah. Who do they follow? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, the biggest, the biggest issue with marketing in my experience is that people don't take the time to get clear enough on who they're talking to and what those people care about. That makes sense. Yeah. And so I wasn't sure that my content was going to resonate. My goal was product managers, marketing managers, people earlier in their career and bringing uh, kind of the breadth of experience of my colleagues I and mean, former colleagues mm -hmm. uh, kind of to elucidate topics that would be educational, right? Yeah. So, but I was specifically target, and I tell you what, those are exactly the people who are in my DMs on LinkedIn. Got it. So, um, which is great, mm -hmm. which is great. So that's kind of what you want to test. I mean, look, we can see the difference here, 756, which is actually for me pretty good, mm -hmm. right? I don't have 2 million followers on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, what I can tell you is that a clear, a simple image gets pretty good feedback. Anything that moves, no matter kind of how simple, you can see if when you share what other people share, even though she's well known, she does a LinkedIn live every week for Newsweek. She's like a 50 top thinkers, 50 in the world. I mean, she's, a, she's an adjunct professor at Duke Fuqua School of Business and Columbia. Like she's no shrinking violet, right? Um, but it only got 103 impressions. So sharing seems like, you know, it's an easy thing to do, but the algorithm, the problem is the algorithm chooses what to show you. Hmm. So if the algorithm decides, oh, you know, you're sharing someone else's original content. People don't want to see rehashes. The algorithm buries you. Same as on Facebook. So it does the same thing. So they want original, short content. And for LinkedIn specifically, the first hour matters. So whatever kind of engagement you get in the first hour, LinkedIn decides how long and to whom they will continue to serve up that content. Interesting. Yeah. So like if you just get like more views within the first hour, they'll like continue to like put it into the algorithm more versus like if it doesn't, then you're just like, to the side they don't show it up they don't show it to people interesting they don't show it to people hmm. yeah they're like ah people don't value that content bury it and you're like dead in the water what else was i going to show you anything that's moving so are you familiar with canva yeah yep yeah so this is from canva okay right i mean this is my stuff here and obviously mm -hmm. me but this is straight from Canva. Okay. Uh, that's a picture from my window. You can see 485 static image. They're like, yeah, not interested. Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't pull through. He's well known, David Shands is well known in kind of the digital entrepreneur community that had pretty decent interaction, right? And I'm yeah. connecting people on here are part of some of his groups because I'm a part of some of his groups. So. That did pretty well. From Canva, 
So visual interest, right? Like yeah. you know, people want their content in one to three seconds or less. And mm -hmm. the fewer words, the better. Okay. I mean, I, I looked at quotes one month and the quote that had the most engagement was three words. Hmm. Time is sanity. So hmm. visuals, moving, very little text, ideally a picture. Yeah. Um, but this at 1321 and all I was doing is talking about, uh, you know, when I was slammed at work, I used to not exercise and skip this and stuck and tell myself to work harder. And then I, I learned and right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not like how to do your message for, for med tech. Yeah. Um, but, and you can see here again, that there are a lot of people looking at this and watching uh, and it's like 1% of the folks are going to engage with the post. So it's, this is hard one. <laughs> this stuff is yeah. hard one. Uh, that's my son, Grayson. So this was very popular post. I mean, I think I joke that if, you know, if I put my son in my post every week, I get a lot more interaction. So, uh, <laughs> yeah before you have like an upcoming event or something that like you want people to like watch or like look out for, like how early do you post? Oh, wow. Uh, what kind of event? In-person or webinar? I'd say either, like if, like for a conference. Oh, that you're like going to a conference? Yeah. I'm not sure we do much more than that. I'd say at least two months out. I mean, if you want people to do something like, hey, sign up for a symposium or hey, sign up for whatever, whatever, I'd mm -hmm. say two months. I mean, usually society, like medical society meetings are announced three years in advance. Jeez. Yeah, three okay. years. So just to put that in perspective of the fast moving digital world, I think those steady, repeatable, consistent, people like to know kind of what to expect, when to expect. Okay. But yeah, figure out who they want and then find who those people are. You could talk to, you could even interview them for five minutes and serve up valuable content, not how cool. I mean, you could throw up a testimonial once a week. That'd be awesome. People would look at it. And you can kind of make it your content. I mean, you can take people's studies and data and things that you found and turn mm -hmm. it into a quick, like 20 second carousel on LinkedIn. You know, you can turn it into, uh, you can kind of summarize other people's stuff or, mm -hmm. you know, inter interview people and throw yeah. it out there. Uh, what I would say is real people are harder and the easiest people to get to agree to do that are not associated with a large corporation. The okay. bigger the company, the longer it'll take, the more departments are gonna to have to sign off. And the less likely you are to have it happen within a three month period of time before your internship is over. Yeah. <laughs> that so, makes sense. If people are like independent, like me, like some kind of independent consultant on supply chain or independent, right? Everyone likes promotion. Yeah. Right. You can put those people out, get them to do like a weekly thing, update on. The only way marketing scales is if you can figure out a way to like rinse, repeat things, like pick themes for the next three months mm -hmm. by week and then start to start to build it. Got it. But you would just recommend like starting out with like three days, something achievable. That way it's like a something routine. that you can do come no matter what. Yeah. Do you like, think it's important then to stay like consistent across the platforms? Like with like LinkedIn and Twitter, like to stay like, I mean, pretty much kind of like the same content or should that be different? Oh, that's a good question. So uh, I've decided that I would rather have the content up than it be perfectly perfect for the platform. Okay. Uh, so my primary is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It's posted on IG and Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay. But you can see, right? Then it's like rinse, repeat on Canva. Got it. That way you're not like creating completely new content. Yeah. Here's one of my hacks. So I'll open this one. 
one of my hacks is see how there's like this box mm -hmm. kind of transparent this box design everything in a square and then remove the square so that way i can post it on instagram the same landscape thing can be posted but they see it as a square got it right that's my that's my hack <laughs> that's why this looks a little it looks a little goofy on linkedin but it's okay yeah uh and yeah that makes well, sense yeah less is more visual interest preferably something that's moving okay and peer to peer no that's really helpful if you start by cleaning up some key profiles yeah that makes sense yeah so come up with some themes i'd say pick your pick one platform pick linkedin get it okay. Everyone go in, doing it three times a week, get their profiles cleaned up, like anyone VP and above. You can also look at some other people, right? And benchmark what some of the best ups are doing. And what questions, that was like the rapid fire version of social media. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it helps a lot. I mean, I feel like I didn't really know where to start in general, um, just cause I don't have that whole background, but like, it's very helpful. Also firing out ideas, but I'm like, Realistically, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so this is like helpful actually talking to someone with a marketing background. I would so the the consistency is everything. Yeah. It is challenged. I can tell you I've posted three times a week since November the 17th, except for the week I had COVID, which was two weeks ago. Okay. So um, because I made the mistake of thinking I could just keep it up with Joanna leaving. Bad idea. Mm -hmm. Bad idea. So that didn't work out too well. Uh, but doing that three times a week is some weeks it's easier than other weeks. Yeah. And then like you had on the spreadsheet, like having that content ahead of time, would you say just like having it ready to go? A absolutely. So we had this, you know, here there's November 17th. You know, what time are we going to post it? What will the content be? What's the type? which mm -hmm. channels, topic. Yeah. Um, and then kind of what will the text be? What's our goal? Mm -hmm. Like, how are you gonna measure success? So now we don't yeah. do like, we measure impressions, right? Yeah. But um, what's the goal? What's the measure? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna make an offer? What are the hashtags? Right, just so like, it's a bit more rinse, repeat. Yeah, that makes sense. I think once you get, so you can see, we kind of got, right? Became like, okay, this is gonna be a video. It's gonna be an edited photo. This is gonna be a graphic carousel. And we did that for a while and saw no one's interacting in the carousel. So we ditched that. Okay. <laughs> like if that was a video, I think it would have had more interaction. Yeah. Fridays are dead. Don't post on Fridays. Like deader than a door now. Everyone's done. Mondays are decent. I just wanted to give us some space. So did you do Wednesday, I do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. From a LinkedIn standpoint. And yeah, seven, we messed around a bunch of times with like seven, eight, nine's good enough. Seven, eight's better. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, so you can see all this. And you can also pick like a group of emojis and say, hey, we're going to use this group of 20 or 30 emojis and we're not going to use, you want to get these guys to agree on this stuff up front. Like, okay, let's first agree on the themes and how often. Okay, yeah. now let's agree on, now let's agree on. Because if you come to them with like, look, I've created all this and we're going to do this and here are the posts and here are the, they're going to, they're going to dive in on like, why'd you choose that emoji? Yeah. Okay yeah like think about laddering them there even if it's like a 30 minute meeting once a day for a week to <laughs> gather to people get the it. yeah that makes sense that's helpful yeah and you're, you're better off choosing one and doing it well focus on one do it figure out how it works do it well once it's at a stable place then pick the next one okay that makes sense. Do you think that it's also important to be like active 
I mean, like, yeah, you're gonna like post all your content, but do you think it's also just like be active within the app? That makes sense. Here's what, here's the thing. So I would say yes, but likey here. So if we do this, here's what happens. If, if I'm posting and it's getting a lot of pickup, things I like then get served up to the people who follow me. Okay. So if I go like 20 things, people are gonna be like, I'm unfollowing her because it keeps showing up. Mm -hmm. So just be cognizant of that. Okay. You can see Maureen Shaver commented on this, mm -hmm. right? So this might have been, so, so this was today. So I try not to like more than three things in a day. Okay. Sounds good. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been more than helpful. So thank you. Great. Great, great, great. Good. All right. Well, have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You as well. Time.